Welcome to Metric Halo's Meal Console 3D, where we'll explore building a summing mixer for your digital audio workstation. Let's open up my tracking session that I use for Pro Tools. It's all set up for tracking in Pro Tools. We've got aux buses, which are assigned to feed my headphone cues. It takes care of all the analog and virtual inputs that I need. Let's go ahead and save this console setup to a new file. Maybe call it DAW Summing. Now we'll clear this mixer. If we go to Configure Mixer, we can delete all our auxes by setting it to zero. Now we're going to delete the cue system. And let's go ahead and uncheck Route New Strips to Host. You can hide your system pane by using the left bracket key. The main output is automatically routed to channels 1 and 2 of my first ULN8. I've also molted it to the headphone jack. Now we need an input strip from our DAW, in our case Pro Tools. We'll assign the input source to be Stereo Host 1 and 2. Now whatever stereo source is coming out of our DAW on channels 1 and 2 will be feeding the main output bus of the Mio mixer. Let's give it a name. In this example, we're going to build a static mixer. I've got automation and other presets that I want to keep in my Pro Tools mix. If you look at the Pro Tools mix page, you'll see there are eight drum mics feeding the stereo bus, as well as feeding a drum parallel compression bus. We've got bass, two guitars, Hammond B3, several vocals, and a stereo plate reverb. All these tracks are fed through a master fader to be recorded on a stereo audio track, as well as being fed to a listen bus for when I'm doing overdubs. I like to place a limiter on the master fader just to grab peaks. I find it best to do my mastering in a separate session. And as I mentioned before, both the stereo audio mix and the listen strips input levels go through a master fader. When we put that stereo track in input mode, we can see our levels to tape. So the listen bus and the mix track are both receiving the same signal in this setup. So I've just muted the listen bus and unmuted the stereo mix track. And since we're input monitoring, we're listening to what will be our stereo mix. All our tracks, our EQs, our effects, our reverbs, all running through the stereo master and ending up on the stereo mix. So without changing the nature of our Pro Tools DAW mix, we want to create a static Mio Console 3D mixer where we can use whatever plugins we have at our disposal in Mio Console. So in Mio Console, Let's create as many input strips as you think you might need to mirror the track count you have already in your DAW. You can use the key combination Shift-Command-A to create as many inputs as you need. All of the inputs naturally default to the main bus. We're going to change this, create a new bus, and assign all inputs to it instead. We're going to name this two Pro Tools, or our DAW, and then assign the bus output back to the host one and two to feed our Pro Tools mix. A nice feature of Mio Console is if it's a stereo input, it'll automatically assign two channels. Mio Console's mixer is gonna send its mix back to your DAW on its host output channels one and two, while it monitors the output of your DAW on its input channels one and two. Let's assign inputs starting with host channel three because you remember, our main DAW output is coming in on host channels 1 and 2. We're 
we're going to assign mono and stereo inputs to mirror what we have in Pro Tools. So in my case, I had eight drum mics, drum bus, electric bass, two electric guitars, stereo B3, three vocals, and a stereo plate. Let's go ahead and name all our Mio console input strips so that they correspond to their Pro Tools counterparts. Now I'm going to clean up Mio console's mixer by configuring the mixer strips to look the way I want them to look. Stay tuned, in part two, we're going to assign outputs in Pro Tools to correspond to the inputs in Mio Console 3D and learn how to print the mix back to Pro Tools. Thanks for watching. This is the end of part one.